friends, welcome to episode 152 of the Quirky Monday Craftcast. My name is Kalisha and you can find me anywhere online as Nadira Tani. I'm coming to you today from my home in Central Florida where it is a really nice spring uh, Sunday. If you are a new viewer, welcome. I hope you find something here that you can connect with. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Thanks for coming to spend some more time with me. Sorry, just got distracted by the baby Godzillas in the bushes. As long as they stay over there, we're good. Um, anyway, so let's get into um, admin. The first admin bit is today is March 20th which means it is the end of the Pisces season make along. So big thanks to everyone who participated. I was so excited to be able to scroll through the uh, Instagram tag and see all of y'all's pictures and progress and projects and everything like that. Um, it's always a really good time for me. So thank you so much for joining in. Um, since technically today is the last day, I will not be drawing for prizes today, but I will do the prize draw tomorrow and um, the winners will be announced on the next episode. So if you participate in, if you bleh, if you participated in the make along, make sure that you are watching next episode to see if you are one of our winners. The way that I'm going to do the prize draw is um, I will be doing I'll count up all of the uh, entries under the Pisces season MAL 2022 hashtag and then do a random number uh, drawing for those. We're going to have, I think either two or three prizes. I'm not 100% sure, but definitely two, maybe three. Um, important thing to know, if you are an Instagram user who has a private account um, and you're participating, when I go to the hashtag, your posts don't show up. So if you want to be counted in, um, please DM me a picture of your of your project uh, so that I can count it in with the final number, and so that you'll be you'll be included. Um, so yeah, until next year, Pisces season. Huh. But yeah, um. The next thing that we have in admin is, as usual, our Bright Spots. So Bright Spots is a section of the podcast where I share the positive things, good moments, bright spots that you all have shared in the comment section of the previous podcast. Um, I am a firm believer in sharing when good things are happening to you because it's so easy to see so much negativity and so much bad so many bad things that are happening around us and then it just kind of bogs us down um even if it's you know stuff outside of us in the world at large in our communities you know in our families um, and then things within us if we're dealing with mental health struggles or physical health struggles or anything like that those struggles and negativity and, and bad feelings can pile up on us. So I always feel like sharing the good things that happen regardless of how big or how small they are um, is a way to kind of help keep yourself afloat. So I have bright spots to share from the Quirky Monday community. So um, these are all bright spots that were shared in the comment section of last episode. And we'll start with Jillian. Jillian said that her bright spot is watching my podcast on a Sunday afternoon. Funny enough, this comment, she posted this comment two hours ago. <laughs> so it's kind of fun. Like you guys get a real time update on some of our comments. So Jillian, I'm glad that you enjoy watching the podcast. Um, she said that it brings some tranquility to all of the other uh, turmoil going. I'm glad that I could provide that tranquil moment for you. And my hope is to keep doing that. The next bright spot is from Kay. Um, Kay said, we are prepping for our first big family Passover since COVID. It will be the first time in over three years since I've seen my nieces and share my favorite holiday my favorite holiday with them. 
we will get the whole weekend with my sister's family and my parents to celebrate and spend time together. As an introvert, you know, and someone that does not really like I'm not the first one to say, yeah, let's have a big family gathering. But at the same time, I am really, like I really value being able to get back together with family. So even like introverted cliche is like, yes, when we have the opportunity to get together as family, I am all over it. If it exhausts me, so be it. So I'm so glad that we're getting to the point where we can safely gather with our families again. So Kay, I hope that you have a wonderful Passover and really uh, make some beautiful memories with your family. Let's see. Um, Elena's bright spot has been starting a candle that her friend gave her uh, for a birthday. It's scented with cedarwood, thyme, and basil and inspired by Oscar Wilde. And it's really cheered up her morning. Um, we have a bright spot from Chocolate, and she said, Jonathan, Mc my bright spot, Jonathan McReynolds is coming to Orlando with Maverick City and Kirk Franklin. I'm super excited. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Um, Alexandria's bright spot is that she won a yarn bowl in an Instagram giveaway today. That is really cool. It's always fun to like win something. You're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. So congrats on your new yarn bowl. Let's see. Looking for bright spots. Bright spots, looking for bright spots. We need a bright spot song. Uh, Roseanne's bright spot is, I have gotten my, cro my crochet mojo back. Um, I love making amigurumi and I'm now working on a really cute bunny and I think oh we have one more I think it's just one more bright spot yeah one more bright spot from Esther Esther said my bright spot is that I've had COVID ever since January and part of February I couldn't knit or crochet not at all but now I can crochet and knit and it feels so good to sit up and do that and I thank the Lord that I can that I can sit up and I still got a little cough, but it's okay. I am, I'm, I'm always glad to hear um, of people who are recovering. So Esther, I'm so glad that you are recovering from COVID and that you're able to get back to things that you were doing before. And um, I hope that we are all able to, to get out of this. To get out of the, uh, yeah. Hope that everyone is is doing everything that you can to stay to stay safe and stay healthy, even as things are returning to normal, and and restrictions are being uh, relaxed. I hope that everyone is able to stay mindful of yourself and as well um, stay mindful of those around you. And I think, oh, nope, there's one more bright spot. So the last bright spot is from Tina. And it says, bright spot, uh, my granddaughter that is eight is learning to crochet. She has gotten the hang of, of slip, slip knot and doing a chain. Still working on making it an even chain though. Welcome to the family. <laughs> Another crocheter. Woo! That brings us to the end of all of the bright spots from this last episode. Um, so if you would like to leave a comment down below of something good, positive, uplifting um, that has happened to you recently, um, and I will share it on the next episode. Previously, I was only like, you know, reading a couple bright spots but I feel like we need more. So however many bright spots get added to the comments is how many bright spots I'm going to share the end. So 
that is everything for admin so let's get into some craftiness we have finished objects so I'll start off with showing you the finished objects of uh, whips from last episode the last episode I showed you these um, cable socks at least I think I showed them to you so they're finished now I am so excited because I don't remember when um, I started these actually when I started these I posted a picture of the cuff on Instagram so I'm gonna scroll back and see when I started these so that you guys can see exactly how long these things were on the needles and then you can like join with me in my sense of great accomplishment in finishing these things so this is how long they have been on the needles and I am really glad to be done with them so let me see which one okay this one this one is the second um, the second sock so as you can see it is just a cable where this twist lays on top of the other twist so it just snakes down and it's the same thing on the other well, I can't really see that same thing on the other side and the way I can tell them apart is because this is the first one and what I did was I had the one snake that was on top and then I crisscrossed them so that that snake shifted to the bottom and then I decided that that's I don't want to do that and you can't even hardly tell that it's there so I didn't do it over here um, unnecessary fancy stuff right <laughs> so these are um, there are 64 stitches I do a slip stitch heel. This is not slip stitch heel. This is a short row wrap and turn heel down to 10 uh, stitches before I start picking up the wraps and going back in for the heel. Um, it's rounded toe. That's basically it. Um, let me see, what else can I tell you? This yarn, last week I couldn't remember where I got it, but I did get this from um, a D sash that was done by the tatted tatter so that's where I got this yarn and it's like so watery it reminds me of like those images where you see where the the light is like filtering through the water like ocean water and stuff like that's what this is making me think of so happy to add these to my sock drawer I will go and that is a really long tail I will go and uh, weave in my ends because you know I'm trying to I'm trying to be better at weaving in the ends on socks because I am notorious for not weaving them in because like why nobody's gonna see them but you know you know what it does do they get tangled around my toes and that's really really annoying so weave in your sock ends kids finish object number one um, the finished object number two um, will go this way. So I made a container cozy. So this is like a, a plastic utensils container because if you watched um, Vlogmas, you would have been exposed to the great tiny spoon search of 2021. So somehow I got super fixated on the idea that I wanted little spoons and I didn't want just like plain little spoons like I didn't want to go to like to, to the Dollar Tree and just buy little spoons at the Dollar Tree I wanted to find them in thrift stores so that I could have little spoons that were also unique that led to I now have a collect a personal collection of uniquely handled silverware that do not match each other that I don't want to mix in with like the house silverware so I keep them all in this container <laughs> I sound like a crazy person but that's okay because it brings me it, it brings me immense joy to have these forks and spoons and a couple knives that are mine and I like how they feel in my hand I like how they look that it's just it just makes me happy 
So just as an example of my craziness, I like when they have cute little handles like that. Like this one has a star on it. And why is most silverware floral designs? Like who decided that? Who decided, you know what we're going to put on all of the forks and knives and spoons? Flowers. And everybody else is like, seems legit. Let's go with it. But, you know, it's fine. So, you know, it just, it makes me happy. Like, I am such a weirdo who gets excited and happy over spoons and forks. So anyway, this is just a little white plastic container. And I did not want to leave it like that. So... I crocheted a cozy for it out of um, what is this this is red heart red heart super saver it's not stripes because it's not a stripe but red heart super saver it's like berry something as the color um, I feel like they really made a mistake not naming this something having to do with tropical because like So now I have this much left and I think maybe I can make one of my Orion beanies because I do need some bigger ones because my hair is now outgrown all of the the Orion mesh beanies that I've had that I have so need to replace those but um, I also thrifted this yarn so thrifted yarn covering a thrifted container full of my thrifted cutlery. My little weirdo heart is happy. Um, so the, the, this was the finished object. I made that. It made me happy. The next finish, the next two finished objects I have are not yarny. I have a paper craft and a sewing project that I finished. So I'll show you guys the paper crafts. So these are some um, affirmation cards that I made. Like the other night, I don't know, I was in a mood and I decided that instead of just sitting in that mood, I was going to take out some uh, three, what are they? These are four by six index cards. Um, and I was going to make some like affirmation cards and this was inspired by the happy mail card that I got from Heather and I showed you guys and I think it was the last episode that I showed you guys um, and I was saying you know that card that she sent was just a four by six index card that she wrote a happy like a nice message on and put a stamp on it and mailed it to me and it was just like so simply awesome that I wanted to do that myself so this this one is mine and okay it says breathe because your girl needs reminders um, the paint that I did is um, the the, the spray timber paints that I showed on the last episode I got them at the Dollar Tree and I just I really loved the colors so what I did to get this kind of effect was I sprayed it on I sprayed the paint onto a plastic page protector and then just kind of smeared it around a little bit and then I took the index card and just it was very messy I really enjoyed it definitely recommend yes so we have that one and then these are ones that are going to be put into the Pisces season make along prizes so I have four so one of them will end up staying with me um, but yeah so and all of them the the background was done with this, the paint sprayed on the uh, page protector and smeared around and you know it gave me a bunch of different looks so you have this one that says I am showing up for myself and I really like how the color looks on this one we have embrace all that is you oh there we go embrace all that is you 
I am grateful for today. And you got this. So I'm going to put one of these in each one of the Pisces season make along um, prizes. And then I'll have the two that are mine. The, the, the specific affirmations I got from my um, affirmation card deck that I bought from Pink Lomaine. I'll put her site below. Um, she doesn't often have her affirmation cards on sale because they sell out really quickly. But I really love them and her artwork is amazing. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've definitely seen me sharing her work before, but I definitely would recommend checking her out if you like bright, boldly colored um, artwork with a splash of affirmation. So there's those. And then my last finished object was inspired by Chris of the Raw Obsidian podcast. I got there eventually, but um, they made bento bags and I had never made a bento bag before and I'd seen them and I was like, oh, those are kind of cool, but I never made one. So I was watching um, Chris's most recent episode, either the most recent one or the one right before. And, and I was inspired to jump on the bandwagon and make some bento bags. So this fabric i have a collection of like thrifted vintage fabric a lot of it is florals evidently you know fabric makers went through a really really deep abiding love with florals but we have this one and the bag you just kind of put your project in it and tie it and then you're just off to go with your little lunch sash sachet but um, yeah, so I will, I use one um, tutorial primarily, but kind of also referenced a second one. So I'll link both of those um, tutorials in the down bar. So this is the outside fabric. And then this one has this little dainty floral on the inside. And then this one is just a bit smaller. Oh, I can show them to you this way. And you can see their size difference. So it's a tiny bit smaller, but we have this. I love, I love floral patterns like this. I don't know why, they just make me happy. Yeah, you can see like little curly cues or whatever. I did not bother changing the, the thread in my sewing machine because why? These are for me. Um, and then the lining is that, that other floral. So there are my projects. And that is the end of finished objects. And we'll jump on over into works in progress. So I'm going to show you the works in progress, the work in progress that hasn't had a lot of action. This is my Relaxed Fit Crochet Tank by Knit Crow Addict. And I think I've only done like two rows since y'all saw it last. Um, and I got a comment on last episode from, I think it was Allie of Little Drops of Wonderful. <laughs> And she said that one of her daughters came into the room while I was showing this on the podcast and was really excited about seeing this finished project. So now I have to muscle through, like I have to keep going and thug it out to finish this project, even though these, these rows, they're not even that long, but something about it is just killing me. It's just killing me. I don't know if I can do it. So like root me on, root me on. So yeah, uh, this is as far as I've gotten. This is as far as I've gotten. And I think when I showed it to you guys last time, I was like here. So like just under the join. 
it's going to be really nice and comfortable, like relaxed fit. Absolutely. After I finish it, but I just got to finish it. And I just, I'm not, it just, it's not growing as fast as I want it to. Right. So, but I'm still working. Okay. So I've got one, one little girl across the pond who is cheering me on to finish this thing. <gasps> Did I just frog out some? Oh my gosh. We're okay. Crisis averted. Cause bro, if this gets frogged out, I think that project done. So yeah, there isn't anything else to say about this one. I've done a couple rows on it. The end. Okay, so now I will show you the works in progress that have actually be, been getting work. So, this baby, I just found this bag. This was living in a coffee, hello? It was a leaf. This was living in a coffee bag um, that I originally made for the shop, but the zipper stuck, so now it's my bag. Um, but I had it in this, I had it in this bag, and then the bag got, I don't know, kicked under the bed or something. It was lost, out of sight, out of mind. So I went on with my merry life. And then recently, um, I think my husband was cleaning out under the bed and found it and put it on the desk. So I was like, oh, look at that. So I finished this sock. Now this sock has been through the ringer. This pattern, I'll hold it up close for you. There you go. It's a lace pattern. Oh, there we go. That's better. It's a lace pattern. And I don't know. Some point last year, I don't remember when it was. Oh, October? I think it was October. It was either September or October of last year. Um, I did a collaboration video with Bellish, which was an app that you could design your own like patterns using um, or generate your own patterns using. So um, the collaboration that I did was um, including like the Quirky Monday viewer viewership and you all filled out polls to help me decide what, what pattern I was going to generate. You decided the color, the yarn, what pattern, the design, the weight, like all of the, the specifics was up to Quirky Monday and I would make whatever the poll said do the the winner of that those polls was a hat which was the quirky monday fam beanie and um i was supposed to get in touch with bellish to have them share a copy of that finished pattern so that people could have it to make um but life got busy and life got a little crazy and then Bellish went out of business in January. So before they went out of business, I went through and screenshotted all of the patterns that I made. Um, so I will be typing up the Quirky Monday Fam beanie and this pattern, which was the other finished, like the other pattern was the Quirky Monday Fam socks. So yes. And back in September, October, when I was making the beanie for the video, I also decided to make the sock um, because, you know, everybody's a winner, right? <laughs> so the sock got made as like participation prize. Um, but I, the pattern itself was written toe up. So I started here as a toe and you know crocheted the lace crocheted the lace knit the lace and i got all the way to the foot or all the way to the heel i cannot with words 
um, worked the heel and I think I did one repeat of the lace and then I was like I don't want to do this lace anymore like I was just not in a lace mood so I thought it will look stupid if I just knit the leg of this sock in stockinette and then I only have lace on the top of the foot that looked dumb so then I decided because I do a short row wrap and turn heel this is worked the same way whether it's toe up or cuff down so I decided to just flip the sock and then I knit a stockinette foot and finished the toe and then the baby Godzillas are having a fight in the bushes um, knit the foot did the toe and then up here was another toe <laughs> so I picked up around like at the end of the toe like the end of the toe increases because it was originally toe up and I cut a stitch at the top and my intention was to cut a stitch at the top and like unravel it and then re-knit the ribbing so I cut a stitch and then I start trying to unravel it and it did not unravel like I don't know if the yarn just didn't want to unravel or if it was something about unraveling from the toe but that doesn't make sense in my head because I've definitely done it before um, so instead of trying to be all like oh, I'm gonna save all the yarn I just cut the whole toe off just choop. yeah I hopefully I've been showing you pictures of the, the process that this sock has gone through so once I cut the toe off I was able to pull out the last little bits of yarn down to the needle and then knit two by two rib back up and then I did uh, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off Judy's magic okay yeah Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off um, for here so the moral of this sock is uh, never be afraid to cut your knitting like if it's not what you want it to be you can make it into what you want it to be and then if cutting it and doing a little bit of surgery doesn't work you can always frog things it's okay to frog it's just yarn you know it can be recreated that fly almost ran into my eyeball it can be recreated you can do it if you knit it once you can knit it again it's all right because I remembered how much I did not want to knit that lace I went ahead and started the second sock I've got I finished the cuff so since I'm doing this sock cuff down like truly cuff down um, I use the German twisty cast on and then I'm just going to knit the rest of it I am mildly concerned that the lace on this sock is going to be upside down when compared to this sock but literally nobody's gonna know just how would they know Who's gonna know you guys you'll know but you wouldn't call somebody out on that like oh your lace is going two different ways who does that um, but this yarn is Brujeria Lana um, in the chocolate cordial colorway but yeah so this is my only other skein of uh, Bruja <clears throat> excuse me Brujeria Lana yarn so I will also be typing up this pattern because I did screenshot that and um, I'll be sharing it with you guys it'll it'll probably um, I'll, I'll put it on the quirky Monday blog the scene of the sentence <laughs> I'll put it on the quirky Monday blog um, considering there's nothing on there I keep telling myself that I'm gonna start writing on that blog has not written one thing next um, this bag is housing my other pair of socks I have started a pair of socks using Felici cloudy with a chance of rainbows um, I have been wanting to knit myself another pair of rainbow socks for a minute and 
I decided to start it the other day. And since I started it right before St. Patrick's Day, I decided to put it in my St. Patrick's Day bag and then, you know, like rainbows and leprechauns and all that good stuff, you know, themes. But I have another bag that's like a rainbow gradient and I'm gonna move this project into there. So here are my uh, Felicis. And here's a mess. Right, so here is sock one. And sock two. I am not the kind of person who has to make striped socks match. If they match, hooray. If they don't, it's fine. Um, I actually considered starting this other one from the other side of the ball so that the colors would go opposite direction, but then I decided against that. So as you can see, I'm a little bit further in this one, and I'm really liking this like muted rainbow. It's like, it's making me, it's making me happy. Um, yeah, so I'm just, why did I do these toe up? Oh, um, I decided to do these toe up so that I could use out as much of the yarn as possible. Um, so yeah. I really like this blue. I actually like all the colors except for the yellow. So yeah. I am playing with the idea of maybe doing some color work close to like like just under the ribbing, like a band of color work. I'm playing with that idea, but I have quite a ways to go before I get there. So yeah. So that's these. And I think that's all I have for works in progress. Yes. So, maker plans. Um, I, I want to make a shirt. And by make a shirt, I mean like I want to use um, my silhouette. So, I don't know if I told you all about the silhouette. I feel like I may have like some point last year. But I have an aunt who's super crafty. Um, so it runs in my family, but she has been like low key de stashing her craft supplies to me. And one of the things that she sent to me was um, a silhouette like cutting machine because somehow she had two. So I have a silhouette and I have used it exactly one time and I've probably had this thing since halfway through last year. So I want to make like planty themed shirts for me to wear because I have an, an abundance of yarny shirts um, and like 99% of the crafting and yarny shirts that I have, I got from Tea Turtle. Um, they're a really fun shirt company, but um yeah, so I want planty ones. Like, I want a shirt that says, um, you know, introverted but willing to discuss plants. And I want one that says plant mom or something like that. You know, like, I want, like, planty punny shirts. Um, and the idea of going on Etsy and searching for one when I have literally all of the supplies in the house right now that I could make a shirt like I could I could do this tonight so the idea of me going and buying one instead of using what I have in this in this house right here it just I can't justify it so basically since I haven't made a shirt and I won't buy a shirt I don't have any planty shirts so that is a maker plan I want to make crafty planty shirts or just planty shirts plant mom shirts I want to do it. Um, so I have that on my maker plans. And I, I'm using this as a motivation. Um, next Sunday is the uh, Central Florida plant swap. And it's, you know, once a month, the last Sunday of the, of the month. And I want to wear like a planty shirt, right? I have one planty shirt and that's the sweatshirt I wore last episode that says I need more plants for my space. Any more planty shirts? 
um yeah so my other maker plan is um i will be making a version of frog frog so whitney marie anderson who is my twin hi twin um she recently finished her frog frog pattern and frog frog is like the mascot like the patron saint of ripping out your projects and you can make like a salty frog frog or a frustrated frog 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 you can make him have different um expressions and he's got like a chubby little body and these really really long legs and arms and i think he's just really cute so i want to make a frog frog um i don't know if the pattern is out yet if it is i will link it specifically otherwise i'll just link um whitney's website um so yeah if you somehow have not seen her work definitely go check her out um so i will be making a frog frog i might even start that tonight because it, it i feel like i will be able to make it quickly because it's so small um but yeah so those are the only two things that i have on maker plans frog frog and planty shirts or a planty shirt. I'm not going to put an ass on the end of that because I just, just make one, Kalisha, just make one. So now we will go to stash acquisitions. And the only stash acquisitions that I have to share with you guys today um, is some happy mail and a thrifted item that I got. So I'll show you my thrifted item first. And it is this mug. <laughs> Look at that ugly little sheet. But it was hand painted in Italy, and I found this at um, the thrift store a couple days ago, and I just I love it so much. So I have been drinking my coffee out of my sheet mug, like a like a like a proper yarny. I'm like I'm a I'm a yarny with a capital Y now that I have my sheet mug. Um, the happy mail that I have came from my good and sweet and sassy friend Akira she has a podcast also her podcast is called um is it just a knitting annihilator I think it is I think it's just a knitting annihilator girl I was about to give your podcast a whole nother name <laughs> but um Akira is such a sweetheart she keeps me laughing she's just like quick with it with the jokes and stuff and I just love it so she sent a prize for the Pisces season make along so I will show you the prize that she sent and then I'll show you the little extra goodie that she sent me um, so this okay. take it out of the bag all right so this is from Lady Dye Yarn. Is there an S? Yes. Lady Dye Yarns. And it is her uh, Rise Up uh, Hamilton themed kit. So it comes with stickers. So these are the stickers that come with the kit. And then it comes with a bag. It's not a moment, it's a movement with like Yarny Hamilton in the middle. Like, I just like that. Like, can this be my logo? No? Okay. I mean, but I do like space and yarn, so a yarn ball inside of a star would be perfect for me. And this is the yarn. So, oh yeah, okay, so the sun is hiding enough for me to show this to you, and it looks like it's, that's actually very true to color. So, there we go. This is going to be one of the prizes for the Pisces season make along. And yeah, you will get all of these goodies. So everybody loves stickers, stickers, project bag and yarn. Thanks to um, Akira, AKA the Knitting Annihilator for providing that prize for the Pisces season make along. And this is the extra goodie that she sent for me. This is yarn by um, Willy Nilly Knits and it is the colorway Thunderstorm. There we go. So this is super bright, super colorful, very neon. 
you know what this is giving me lisa frank and i'm very excited about that i love me some lisa frank when i was little like and then this right here yeah that's me that is me but yeah i loved me some lisa frank when i was little the coloring books the trapper keepers the fuzzy posters yes yes to all of that so this is a fingering weight yarn it's 80 20 merino silk and it's eight or 600 yards so i should be able to get like a nice like a nice size shawl out of this but i'm not like i don't know what i want to do with it yet i also don't know how the colors go so let's find out together Ooh, ooh, it's got a rainbow in it. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so it's going to have like, like swaths of gray followed by pops of rainbow. Okay. So that is everything for my stash positions. Um... And that's everything for for crafty content. So I will get into plant mama what plant mama life and whatnot. And the two notes that I put were um, I went to the Orlando plant swap and that was today. So there's the Central Florida plant swap, which is the last uh, Friday, the last Sunday of every month. And then there's an Orlando plant swap that has just started up again. Um, I don't think they had it at all over the winter, which is understandable. But um, I got invited by one of the people that I met at the last Central Florida swap to come out to today's swap. So I was like, okay. So um, we actually organized a swap um, between me and her. So I brought her a... Um, cutting of the pencil cactus that I showed you guys a couple episodes ago and she gave me a little Hoya so this is the Hoya crinkle 8 I'm gonna be really really gentle because it's got a leaf coming in you see the little baby leaf right there so it's it's in a oh, oh. dang it It's good. <laughs> One thing I've learned about Hoyas is that their leaves are super delicate. So I am just, it landed this way with the baby leaf up, so hallelujah. But anyway, this is a crinkle eight, so called because it has eight little dimples along the leaf. And um, I'm gonna be putting this into some sphagnum moss in one of my um, terrariums to get it rooting um i'm really excited about this and also i'm really enjoying the idea of swapping plants with somebody um because the the plant itself like has a little story right so that makes me happy so i'm going to put this away before i break it And then I'll get it set up this evening. Other other things I've done on, on, on the planty front is I got um, I just I got it stuck in my head that um, I needed to propagate my lemon lime maranta and I cut the entire plant up into pieces. Like it was trailing, even though it was giving, like it was, it had leaves that were going yellow at an alarming rate. So I knew there was something not right with the plant. So I brought it out on the porch and what started as, I'm just gonna trim it a little bit. Ended up like this. <laughs> so it is currently just this one stem in here um it's not putting out any 
Oh, I lied. There's a growth point. That's a new growth point. And then there's just this stem. This is a new leaf on this stem. And the rest of the, the vines I cut down and cut into um, like maybe two node cuttings and I have them propagating in water inside. So my plan is going to be once those all root, I'm gonna repot them together so that um, hopefully I can grow it into um, a healthier plant because this plant has been on the struggle bus for a while. Um, I seem to be in a like in a time of really wanting to rehab my plants, um, like cut them down, start them over. Um, and it's really cool to see plants do that. For instance, this, um, this was a golden pothos, I think. No, it wasn't. This was a jade pothos, so just the green pothos. And it started getting long and leggy and really looking unhealthy. And then I think maybe it got thrips or something. So I cut it all the way back to the soil. Like all of these leaves are new. And I wanted to see if it would just grow back without me doing anything. So I cut it all the way down to the soil and just left it. And it has quite a few little growth growth points coming in um, this piece is probably dead so I'm gonna pull that out yeah it's got quite a few little growth points coming in this leaf got burned in the Sun because I did bring this outside this one and I did the same thing to one of my philodendron um, I we had a bunch of rain the other day so I put them outside to get the rainwater and I didn't bring them back inside and then the Florida Sun came out and it kind of burnt that leaf it burnt quite a few of the little baby philodendron leaves, but they will be okay. Um, but I really think that it's cool how plants will, you know, make their own way. Um, I am in the process of rehabbing my Adansonii, it's currently outside. And I'm just... I really, hopefully I can find a picture of this plant before I chopped it up. This is what it looked like before I chopped it up. And right now, it is a ghost of its former self. And it really had a hard time with, it got thrips and had a hard time with that. And then in my like care, you know, and treatment of the thrips. I think I went a little bit too heavy handed with the neem oil. Um, and I think that it was just too much neem oil on it. So it's all wilty looking and sad, but it's starting to put out a new leaf. So I'm hopeful. And I'm really like strongly resisting the urge to buy a new Adansonii because they are all over the place in like Lowe's and Walmart and Home Depot they're just they're they're available but I just am emotionally connected to this one like this is my Adansonii baby and I really want it to flourish so <sighs> taking care of plants isn't always you know happy beautiful Instagram pictures sometimes it is shriveled up leaves that look like cooked spinach because that's, that's where that, that Adansonia is currently living. Um, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I just looked at my, um, my Monstera Deliciosa, who's sitting next to me. And I looked at it yesterday. And there was a tiny leaf coming, you know, coming out. And there was like maybe this much of the leaf out yesterday. Now, there is like this much of that leaf coming out. And I'm super excited about that one because it is 
So the biggest leaf on my Monstera, I called it Monster because it was so huge. It was one that we were watching like for half of Vlogmas, watching this leaf emerge and, and you know, harden off. And, you know, everybody was a part of the, the birth of this leaf. And Monster started putting out a new leaf. And Monster's new leaf was starting to emerge. And then we had the freeze and the cold burned up Monster's new leaf. Um, like burned it all the way to the, 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 the stem part. So there's like the leaf, the leafy bit, there's the stem, and then there's where it connects to, to Monster. Don't you love my, my plant examples? Like you guys are following me. So the cold burned the whole leaf off. So all it had was the stem. And it still had, like on Monstera's, the, the next leaf will come out like this. So it hadn't burned down into the, like the sheath of the, the next leaf. So I was hopeful that that leaf would, wasn't damaged and would come out okay. And it just, it's, it stopped, like, it stopped moving, it stopped, like, developing, it was just, like, I could tell that there was a leaf there, like, inside, but, um, it wasn't emerging or anything. And then I noticed further down on the stem, um, a lower growth point had activated. So one thing I'm learning about plants, especially vining plants, is if something happens to the top of the vine, like as they're growing out, right? If something happens to the top of that vine, like if you cut it off or if something damages those leaves, the plant will start growing from a lower point in the vine and it'll just be like, that's fine. We still, we still live in, we still live in. So a lower point on this vine has activated and I was kind of thinking like, okay, maybe the top leaf has stopped because the bottom leaf is going and that the plant has to manage its energy. So maybe once that bottom leaf, you know, finishes developing, opens and hardens off, maybe the plant will then send energy back to that top leaf and get it going. And that's pretty much what, ha what happened. So it's been really cool to watch this process and to just observe it. So, yeah, we've got another leaf watch. I'm really excited about it. Um, but yeah, I did not expect it to be like that far out of the sheath. Like, yeah. This is definitely one of my favorite plants. Um, when it really gets going and is growing, it's very prolific. And, um, yeah, the only thing I wish it wasn't planted in a red pot because it just looks like Christmas time, like this big old green plant in this red pot. And that's just, I love Christmas and all, but that's not the vibe. That's not the vibe. And I'm really not going to repot this plant just because I don't like the color of the pot. So, I'll put some, I'll maybe put some pictures while I was talking or something like that, hopefully. So yeah, that's everything. Um, last week at work was a very full week. Um, by the time I got off work on Friday, I was just like, Nobody better have any kind of need for me until Tuesday. Like, I want to take Monday off so badly, but I won't. Um, but it was just, it was a, there was a lot happening last week. Um, but I made it through. So very excited. Um, and I've had, I had a couple um, experiences last week where people, um, like affirmed me in what I was doing like that reassured me that's the word reassured me that I'm doing a good job um, that I'm doing my job well 
and I'm the kind of person that does need that reassurance. Like I need to know that what I'm doing is good, you know. And because I know that I'm 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 doing the best that I can. So I really want to know that the best that I can is good, right? So um I'm so glad that I was able to have those opportunities last week to be reassured because it makes me like feel like okay, I'm I'm all right. I'm doing this. The choices that I'm making are good choices. The the processes that I'm putting together are good. People like see what I'm trying to do and it just it really felt good to have those um couple times where people really um reassured me so this coming week i don't think i have anything wild this coming week but um yeah i hope that your week coming up is a good week i hope that you are able to find time to do things that you enjoy doing things that fill you up that make you feel good that make you feel happy, that bring joy to your yourself, you know, and then once you have buoyed yourself up, I hope that you're able to take that energy and help buoy somebody else up. And um, I think that's all I have for you guys today. I am going to go on inside and edit this video and set it to go up tomorrow morning. Um, as always, leave a comment down below of something good that happened to you. Share your bright spots. Read everyone else's bright spots. Um, celebrate with each other in the comments. I love, love, love seeing you all um, congratulating each other on good things or, or sharing in the, the good things that are happening um, to other people in the Quirky Monday family. And um, yeah, I hope you have a great week. Thank you so much for being a part of my universe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, friends.